I just remember when I think back at like how money would be dealt with mm -hmm. and like some of the shady shit that they would do. They, they used to make me, if I if I got paid like a couple of hundred, hundred pounds at a show, they would organize me to get an envelope with some money in it at the end. And then they would say, get on the bus and go come back to the agency and give us the cash. And then I would never see the money again and it would go towards expenses. Oh, the or expenses. Hello. Hi, babe. Hi. Hey. <laughs> um, welcome to High Low with the Murata. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing this. I'm so happy to be here. I'm um, really excited for you. There's so much going on right now. Um, not just the show, but like your music career, man. Thank you. I'm, um, it's funny because I feel we met in London, right? On Love Magazine shoot in like, I want to say 2015. Probably ages ago. So long ago. Which, which version of that were you? Was that, were, was I riding a, to a Toblerone? Possibly. Definitely. <laughs> like I might have been doing something like that. Yeah. yeah there's a couple of iterations of Were this. you like, you were living in London at that point or? Um, yeah. I mean, I still have a place there and okay. I guess that is like my, my domicile home. Okay. So I want to talk to you yeah. about your music career and writing mm -hmm. um, and what that's been like for you. I mean, I've actually been writing for years. I, I put out my first song about eight or nine years ago and I've been writing I've been writing consistently for probably like 10, 10 years. And um, I first put out a song called Brutally about, yeah, about eight years ago. And that was kind of like my, I think that, I think it was actually something I've always done quite, quite privately. Um, but it was very consistent. And it's really, I really always felt like it was the only, like literally the only place where I actually had a true outlet or a place to e express myself that was actually all my own. Um, I actually kind of, I, yeah, I think there's like a similarity between us with, with how you've, um, how you've taken to writing and, and, and writing in like when, when I read your book, I just, I gobbled up the whole thing in oh, one. Thank you. In you one were actually sitting. one of the first people who read it. I read it, it so went, got, Yeah. Really? Oh, yes. That's so I literally was on the couch and I just read the whole thing and I was like, this is just incredible. And, and thank like, you completely kind of like, and it's just like out there and like a, like a, a very like brave and cool thing to do. Thank you. Yeah, no, I found writing for me to be, I mean, you started with modeling, right? It I was did, the same yeah. for you as, yeah, 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 for me. Um, and if you are somebody who's creative, it can feel kind of um, awful mm -hmm. to kind of just be this voiceless, yeah. um, like non-creative person who's involved in other people's creative projects. And writing is so nice because you don't have to like wait to be cast in something mm -hmm. or work with a team. It's something you do on your own. You can completely go and do it whenever and actually make a, yeah, and, and, and create. And that, that was kind of where I found myself actually, um, it would be like, you know, always after a shoot or after in the middle of a movie, it would be, I would go to the studio like late at night, I'd always be doing it. And, um, and actually kind of, I'm very glad that I got to be a model first and an actor and 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 or, and be creating and writing that entire time because I got such a rich amount of experience and loads of things to write about yeah. from from those years. Um but yeah, you're right. Uh, when you when you are a model, yeah, you you definitely you're kind of being trained and brainwashed uh that you're this yeah, this mute mm -hmm. and and it's just like a billion people touching you and kind of creating for your for their vision and and it and it I don't know it does it does like it does suck your soul a little bit um, but I feel like you always were really good even when we met I feel like it wasn't I had an understanding that you were not just a model that you were creative and were acting and I don't I mean I think you were putting out music but I didn't necessarily think of that how was that I mean now you have the show coming out and like you have hit song your I love your I like hear it on TikTok and I'm like yes Suki I, <laughs> it's so great um but how has that felt like that journey from kind of being this model and being this like coat hanger where you're taught to be a mute to getting to this place where you are creative and you're a part of things not only that you're making but also with groups of people um well I think I I think it, I think it's taken me I think it happened incrementally and I kind of um like I I, I had this feeling where I really wanted to to break out and do different things. And I knew that, and I knew that actually I wasn't like, I, I never felt entirely comfortable in just, in just modeling actually, uh, probably because I didn't think I was very good at it actually. Mm. You know what I That's mean? That's kind of sad. 
Why didn't Is you it think though? I'm not like seven foot and right. like a, and a rake. Like, right. you know, I think there are people that, that should be doing that for, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, maybe I just, um, but, but yeah, I guess, um, I, I guess I did, um, but that, yeah, but that's, that's how, that's how, that's how I started, um, that's how I started everything. I mean, I didn't, I didn't like waltz into modeling and, and suddenly kind of be successful for it. I definitely, you know, I, I'm glad I'm, I've got to kind of experience a lot of, a lot of different iterations from it. Cause I probably started when I was about 15 or 16. And, and those first few years were like, like toppling around London and like ginormous heels because mm -hmm. I wasn't very tall mm -hmm. and you know like spending the summer trying to get trying to kind of change my body and get really skinny so they'd be happy with me and then kind of I was always just a bit like you know like fuck them and like you know yeah. and, th and then I'd kind of reverse it and eat pizza and and then you know get called in and get in trouble or whatever but I, I definitely um yeah I've, I've seen get I've seen in trouble with the agency yeah. yeah oh my god I remember like it's so funny like I just remember like how much I would try and avoid my agency when I would go in like at like 15 16 because mm. they'd want you to be in a certain kind of like look and I had kind of a strange style but they'd always want you in like a little top shot black skirt and like a, a little like all a, black yeah all black a little <laughs> and the heels have a bikini on underneath I hated for digital. the heels I couldn't deal with the heels like yeah. I had to be in I don't know I just had like a, yeah I had a specific way that I wanted to be and I would and I would kind of like run I remember I would like if I had to go to a casting or something I'd always just be like running past them to try and avoid them. So did you hate it? Did you hate modeling? No, I didn't hate it because okay. it was, I think it was, I think I definitely hated a lot, a lot about it, but um, I didn't hate it at all because it was, it was, it was a way out of the house mm. that was very exciting. Yeah, well, you're not an Epo baby, which means that you've worked hard for. Oh <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I mean, but, uh, I don't, yeah. I, there's no shame on the nepotism no, 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 babies, but, but I, I have I do think baby it's a, energy. Though. It's a different <laughs> journey, though, right? Because you do kind of get used to hearing no, and you don't have the in, you you come from the outside, and then you have to infiltrate, and you have to work really hard to do. get the attention of the important people and say like I'm someone because yeah. you aren't anyone when you are starting out as an anonymous random 15 year old. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I was lucky because I was in the middle of I was in the middle of London, and I was about yeah. I kind of lived in the suburbs, and I would just be on the I'd just be on the bus going into London, and kind of um, just <laughs> yeah, just ha it was it was a really fun it was a very fun time as well. I get um, that. Yeah, it was a good time. It was like like London and that and that and that kind of time period was um, was exciting. And then and then a couple of years into it, you know, I like yeah, I start I started like the first few years like yeah, trying trying to get jobs, going around in massive heels and um, and kind of you know probably making like probably making a couple of hundred quid a, mo a month. And I actually remember this. So, it, it's so funny. I remember. Um, I just remember when I think back at like how money would be dealt with mm -hmm. and like some of the shady shit that they would do that they, they used to make me if i if i got paid like a couple of 100 100 pounds at a show they would organize me to get a, 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 a some an envelope with some money in it at the end and then they would say get on the bus and go come back to the agency and give us the cash and then I would never see the money again and it would go towards expenses. Oh, the expenses. I talk about this expenses. all the time because there's no mo there's no union for models. No. So you have these really young women who oftentimes aren't, um, they're foreigners. So they have like no family and they right. have no sense of business or anything. And they're totally exploited. And it's like, oh, well, we'll get you a card at the airport. That's $300 that's taken right. out of your check. Um, I used to get this like web fee mm -hmm. for just them having my portfolio on their I website. I mean, models still get, th they yeah. still get that. And and to print the cards, just yes. to, just to carry, you know, 300 pounds a month or something. But all and these you'd fees. ask about it and all this, you'd watch the, you know, not only just their commission. Mm -hmm. Also, the other thing people don't know about modeling agencies that drives me insane in any other space, like any other theatrical space, it's like a 10% commission. That's mm -hmm. normal, right? With modeling agencies, it's oh like, oh, this drives me nuts. 20% so that they, they negotiate with the client. They take 40% of your of your, of your money. I actually only realized this a couple of years ago when mm -hmm. once I left it, but they do a plus 20, which is theirs, and then they take 20% out of your actual check. Yes. And then they and then they charge you for all kinds of fees. I mean, sometimes I would go on go on trips um, and stay somewhere for a couple of months, and I'd just end up with a big fat zero. And they yeah. would put me in a model house with a bunch of girls and charge us all like loads of money to for for like a, you know, just put, stack us all in well, there. Well, and it was never like 
you were never asked, right? The question, there was never a question of like, no. oh, do you want to do this thing that's mm-hmm. going to cost you money? It was like, this is what you do. Yeah. And then you would be like, oh, but this just took half of the money that I was trying right. to make. <laughs> and you're not getting paid a ton when you're yeah. first starting out in modeling. Yeah. People don't know that. Yeah. It's definitely, for me, I always compla- com- compared it to like my friends who are waitressing and it's definitely better than minimum wage. Mm-hmm. It's pretty bad. Yeah. And the expenses really do fuck it up. Yeah, they do. And and I didn't, I mean, I, w- I would never have wanted to ask my parents to come and step in. I remember, I remember kind of being in that situation. My, I kept my parents very out of it. Did you, did you ever like ask your parents? No, like, I didn't. You just they don't. They also are just bad at business. My parents are like, um, teachers basically. So they just had no concept of that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's completely wild. No one has any idea. It is. It doesn't make any sense. Basically. Actually, my dad filed my taxes for me when I was like, whatever, 17 and I'd made some money. And like three years later, I got like $300 from the government because he had done it totally wrong. So no, I wasn't asking there. <laughs> <laughs> My poor dad's going to listen to this and be like, I was trying, but yeah, it was not great. Yeah. Um. So when did you start writing? Like what, at what point were you writing when you were also modeling? And was there a moment where you're like, I want to get out of this? Or were you just kind of, was it natural progression? I think it was a fairly natural progression, but I started acting. I actually got my first acting job from um, a, a modeling agent. I think he said, I think it was something like, oh, you know, you you're too, you have too much energy and you move around too much. And and I don't think you're going to make in this. Go to this. There's a, there's a casting for a movie called Love, Rosie, which was with Sam Claflin, who now 10 years later, we're doing this TV show together, which oh is really God, that's sweet. that's amazing. Yeah, but it was, it was, um, it was a role uh, of his kind of, yeah, of his, of his girlfriend with Lily Collins as well. And that was, that was how I got my first acting job. And had you ever trained with acting or were you just well, like winging it? No, I had, I had okay. done, I had done, I had done um, a lot of, I hadn't done proper, proper training, but I'd done a lot of, um, I'd done a lot of those like stage schools and, and weekend schools and singing classes and all that I feel kind like of stuff. I the Brits are so good at that. We do. We do yeah. go off on the weekends. You and, go off on the weekends and you get really good at acting. Yeah. I was talking about this with someone the other day. We we're like, it's just not the same as LA. You don't have that kind of like, everyone wants to be famous. It's like people do acting because they like acting and they're good at it. Well, I didn't, yeah, it would be, it was like a very fun thing that we do on a Saturday. And then I did, I, I would do like singing on the uh, uh, mid- midweek and stuff like that. And then I guess you, yeah, you had like a, I had like a teacher at school and all that kind of, all that kind of stuff. But it was, yeah, there's kind of a lot of communal stage things going on over there. Um, so you get this part and this part, yeah. um, you start, I'm sure, thinking like, okay, I'm an actor. Like I can act. I mean, I don't know if I, yeah, I don't know if I, <laughs> or just like <laughs> I if I had pursuing to, that. But it did. Yeah, I did start, I did start pursuing it. And I definitely, um, I, I, I remember, I remember actually I did fall into quite a, I, I fell into quite a big depression that lasted for a couple of years. And I think it was tied in with sort of public, um, just like, yeah, b- being public and going through heartbreak as like a mm. 20, 21 year old and, and having like a lot of eyes on me and, and it felt like it probably didn't, it probably wasn't even, but, but it did. Yeah. It felt, I mean, you definitely did. Yeah. It felt, it, fe- it felt like a lot. And, um, and I, and I, and I felt like, I felt like me, like myself, um, was kind of, was very drowned in that. Yeah, I remember really wanting to take a step back and and being on set and being in kind of these like families on set was actually, was a really lovely thing to to be in. But I, I, yeah, I remember I kind of had a, I remember I had a role in uh, a movie called Pride, Prejudice and Zombies. And that was, that that kind of took me out for, for for a couple of months. And, and once you start doing that, the, and you're modeling, and you're saying no to, you know, I, I remember I got offered a massive, a massive show at that point or like, you know, big, big things. And, and you just can't because you're, yeah. you're on set and you kind of, you know, that kind of like slows it down a little bit. Because you're saying no, you literally you don't have can't. the time, the yeah. scheduling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just, they just won't let, they just won't let you leave. So, um, so it kind of, yeah, it was, it was, it was a natural progression. And I think by stepping away from it, I was given some, I was given some space to kind of, Kind of, you know, it took, it took a long time, but I think now as I've come into, but yeah, I'm th- I'm 31 now. I feel like in the same. yeah. So and when we uh, met, we must have been around the same. I think the we same like age. kind of came into the public eye around the same time too. Do you think so? I always think about like when you burst into everybody's consciousness. I remember like seeing one of the first interviews that you did, maybe like a GQ cover, and you came out of the, you came off the bat like you would 
you know, you were very, you were incredibly confident. You had, had, you oh had God, a lot to you. say. But you really did. I remember That's it was so funny straight because out of the, the gate. Did it feel like that for you? I mean, I was always, you know, an outspoken person. Like mm-hmm. I was the type of person who would be at dinner and would like share my opinions loudly. Yeah. But I think I was not confident. I think I was a child. Right. Yeah. yeah. And totally mm-hmm. unprepared for mm-hmm. the scrutiny. Um, I mean, I didn't have um, the like romance kind of like public aspect because mm-hmm. I was dating a normie basically Uh (laughs) um but just you know the like all of a sudden everyone having opinions about you when you don't know who you are is um pretty bizarre and like quite hard and I also was in a depression in my 20s that um I think resulted from some of that and kind of feeling like who am I and what do I even want and yeah yeah but I think that um actually writing for me was like the way to kind of get my bearings and like figure mm-hmm. out. So like, I guess, yes, I have always been outspoken, but the person that I was then and the person I was, I am now is like- Vastly be, different. Yeah, they can yeah. be more different. So it's funny that you perceive me that way because I felt like a mess. You felt like a mess. Totally. Yeah, I felt like, I felt like a mess, I think. Um, I think, and it's it's kind of like that process in your 20s of, of being able to find out like what kind of what kind of path you have and like having to draw away from things or, or, or change things a lot um, to actually kind of like define what, what your specific path is going to look like. Yeah, for me, it was like figuring out boundaries in mm-hmm. some ways, not just like modeling wise, which is obvious one, right? Kind of like what you're comfortable with, whatever, but just with other people and learning to like protect myself in a way that I just, I was so... Um, I guess I was confident and came off as confident, but really a huge part of me was just like kind of a little bit of a rag doll Mm -hmm. in a way that I'm like, oh man, I see that now with girls in their twenties and I'm like, fuck, how do I teach you to advocate for yourself? I'm so protective of girls in their twenties. I'm so protective of my friends that I see it happening to as well, that Mm -hmm. like are young in their twenties and, and, and going through it. Yeah. I just, I don't, I'm con, I think I feel like you're the same, but if I know one, I'm like, just ask me about everything. Tell me, tell me what the deal is. Like, Mm -hmm. like this is what you should be getting. This is what you, what should be happening. This is how it should kind of feel in work relationships. Oh my God. In work relationships, I'm like, we have to disclose, like we as women have Mm -hmm. to talk about money. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We have to talk about, you know, who's hiring and what their vibe is and how to be safe literally. And then how to be strategic. And then also in like relationships. (laughs) That's the other thing that I think that, you know, you can be really helpful to girls in their twenties when you're talking to them. I should say young women in their Mm twenties, like because I just, I don't know, when you're in your 20s, you you feel so much older than you are. Yeah, and so powerful as well. Yeah, but you're not. You're not powerful at all. No. <laughs> when did you realize that? Um, probably in the probably in the last few years. I mm. just suddenly had like so much more empathy for myself as uh, if I look back as a as a, being like a 20, 21 year old and like kind of how, how, how I like God just like yeah being thrust uh, into and just having no idea of boundaries or who I was mm. around or what kind of situations I get be, what kind of situations I was in around actually and 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 I think after after me too and after after this kind of like cultural like rise that we've had uh, even more like when when that all happened it was like <gasps> yeah know? it was hard to process it a was lot of hard stuff. to process yeah yeah late 20s for me was when uh, it's the same basically yeah. the same years and I love being in my 30s me too yeah. I love it um it's I feel so... younger now than I did when I was in my late 20s yeah I have yeah. less there's less like um yeah I feel like less kind of damaged in a way and mm-hmm. and, and and lighter well I think such a huge part of growing up and really being able to come into yourself is also forgiving your younger self. And for me, it wasn't that I needed to identify that I was like some kind of quote unquote victim. It was more that I needed to not think that I was an idiot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was just the, that was the hardest part, right? Like what you just said, having empathy for yourself when you're younger. It's hard because I think our natural instinct is to think, oh, if I had just acted differently, I would have protected myself. But then you end up, you know, because you want to believe that you can protect yourself, mm-hmm. but then you just end up blaming yourself right. and feeling shame ashamed you yeah know? and I kind of struggle I think I struggled with um I struggle with like the narrative of I kind of struggle I think for me like in myself by like, ever thinking that I was a victim like mm-hmm. that kind of like me too I hate really when I hear that word me yeah, yeah. um I don't I, yeah I, I just I just don't want to I don't want to feel like that but but then I think it's important to 
locate and and notice when you were maybe like you know you, when you were like victimized or or in or a, taken advantage of taken advantage there were situations there were things that were outside of yourself that impacted you and hurt you potentially right um okay I want to get back to <laughs> how do you feel like this personal kind of awakening like getting older whatever getting older quote unquote coming out of your 20s has impacted like your career and acting and music and all of that um, I think, yeah, I mean, I think I'm, you know, you know, I kind of, I I, I think um, when it came to music, I wrote this record, I, I wrote, I, I'd been writing the record for a long time. And then I kind of just got to a point where I was like, um, if I don't, if I don't make it now, I, you know, I, I don't think I, I don't think I will. And I've spent a lot of years kind of slowly, you know, it's, it, it's kind of like, I was very, very nervous to do it. I didn't think I could. I kind of thought I'd be laughed at or, you know, you just have mm -hmm. so many things or like, I'm a model or I'm a this. No one's going to take my music seriously. No one's going to take right? it seriously. Yeah. And, and, and also I felt like I've been a model. I've been an actor, like as someone like is enough already. Right. Like, <laughs> Or you're just like really talented. <laughs> no, yeah. like enough already. So, um, so I think, so, so yeah. So when I like approach making the record, I, I found the producer that I really wanted to work with. I went to North Carolina. I, I made it myself. I made it independently. I paid for it myself, and wow. and it, and it was really just. I had no label involved. I I just wanted to make exactly the record that I wanted to make, like with with absolutely no noise around me. And I was really, to be honest, I would have been totally happy if it was, you know, if uh, there, there was a small amount of people that kind of fo followed my music over the years, and and I really would have been just happy with with that like I, I kind of wasn't yeah you weren't doing it for like a career move no I, I didn't I really that. expect I didn't really expect no, the idea of going on tour mm -hmm. I've just done I've, I've just been on I've just been, I've done like 70 shows since last summer I've been on like three shows yeah it's crazy like I, I know I never would have thought that that would have happened because you were doing it truly for yourself I just didn't I didn't even dream that far mm -hmm. I didn't even like think that far mm. I just I just thought I just thought of um yeah, I just I just knew that I I just knew I'd be really uh, unhappy with myself if I if I hadn't put that out and it and it and it all came from like the the album's called I Can't Let Go and it it, it, it all came from like those years of feeling like I was drowning mm. like really feeling I was drowning um, so I had to like memorialize it I had to make that time feel tangible like it was kind of You're like processing making, it yeah it was like making sense of kind of like the most important years that I, I had in my life so um so yeah really that was that was the goal and then and then afterwards every, everything else has happened after that like um getting it signed and then and then I don't know the yeah the TikTok thing was super random because that song I'd released like seven years ago. So crazy. It wasn't even on the record. It's like playing in my head as you <laughs> talk, honestly. <laughs> yeah, that was a, great. It was an old song that actually my label were like, please, can you, can you delete all the old stuff? When we when, when we put out this record, like I, we don't, you know, we're not sure about all this old music. And I was like, no, these songs are like incredibly important. Like these are, you know, that there was like some of the first songs that I made. Um, wow, so, I'm glad you didn't yeah, delete them. Yeah, I'm glad them. I didn't delete them. Shit. <laughs> Trust good looking boys. Uh -huh. um, but uh yeah, that so so yeah, all of all of that just yeah, all of that was kind of like really un, un, unexpected and 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 it was just like an, an incredible thing that 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 people connected to it and 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 now I yeah now I have this like this musical connection through my songs with a whole bunch of people and I feel so much more connected to people from the whole experience of how being does out that there. Um, relate to like when you're acting because obviously acting is such a like group project mm -hmm. um and that can be the good thing that can also be like the bad thing where you have less control and you were just when you came in you were talking about like show's gonna be out really soon and it's a weird thing where you're just like hope oh, people like it yeah and it's a little different than when at least for me when I've done like my own project I imagine with you with music where you're like well this is mine so at least I made it but then with acting you're like relying on so many other people I mean you're so completely out of control yeah. really you have you have control over a couple of things I think the difference between acting is yeah it's a group project mm -hmm. it's um you're you're for hire you're part of a you're you're one part of a a, a giant thing <laughs> and uh, and music you're you're kind of the boss you, right you're really the boss and and you know that that that's been a wild thing um starting to go on tour and be like I didn't really realize it's like, no, I'm starting a, like a touring music corporation where I'm going on tour and like, there's not label support. It's you 
paying for 15 people to get on a bus and you're kind of responsible for everyone yeah. <laughs> and you're and you're and you know you're go yeah you're going around you're going around the whole states and just you're like your own company it's your or, own company yeah it's also really that part's like kind of scaring me a little bit because that I don't, I don't know music is music is a whole other thing it's 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 so it's so, yeah it's it, it's 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 just you you're you're the boss and and um you have to kind of you have to look at budgets and understand how, you know, understand you you lose a ton of money going on tour, even though I sold out the whole thing. The industry has gotten so crazy um, with like how you make money. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you make money. Please tell me how you make money. I have no idea. I'm like, everything's great, but like I've never been more broke in my life. But it's all good. It'll be fine. Um, well, but, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm really sad to do this, but I actually have you to have go. You have to go because you have yes, to go on a plane. But um, I want you to come back on another time I would because love I have to. a million other things I, I want to talk to you about. To. But I'm really excited for you and I can't wait to see the show. And I also would love to come see you in concert. Definitely. I when you're in New York. Too. I'd love that too. This was so fun. This, yeah, was, this so felt fun. like longer than 20 minutes. Great. I think that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> We've right. covered a lot. Thanks so much. Bye. <laughs> 